Yo, still bills. What's the deal, man? I just got off of work, man. Ain't nothing worse than when you working and you gotta keep a hat on your head and your hair get all matted up and shit. And it just look wild out here, man. I'll be I'll be looking like George Jefferson and shit like that, man, with my hair like shit crazy. But big game, man. I wanted to rap with y'all about this um this uh Paulie Malignaggi situation, man. Like. Uh, I've always had a respect for Paul Malignaggi from an analytical standpoint. Um, he was one of the cats that I looked to to hear from. I like, you know, I thought his breakdown on the, um, his, his his fight, his breakdown of the fight, um, his, his analysis and breakdown as the fight progresses, I thought they were just spot on. They were extremely astute. And as I said before, you could listen to Paul Malignaggi on the radio and through his analysis get a vivid picture of what the fighters in the ring are doing even though you can't see him I, his, his analysis of that astute and that concise and spot on I've always been a fan of Paulie Malignaggi and his ability to call a fight and break down a fight but I, he fell out of favor with me with the, you know with that with the George Floyd uh, shit like that or whatever man so I just really haven't been following him so I come across him just you know in the past day or so because of what he said about Devin Haney and um, I couldn't disagree more he hit on some good points he hit on good points as it pertains to you know him um, him having a better understanding of the business and what you know what we all suspect uh, 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 suspected what, what actually went down when Devin Haney was looking to fight Lomachenko the first time when Loma, you know, forfeited the belt, because a lot of people just run on that, on that, on that narrative. It's a very vague, it's a very vague and moot talking point because it sounds easier. It's easier to just, you know, go off some surface level knowledge than to actually critically think about the situation to be able to be able to unpack it better. And it, honestly, you shouldn't have to deep that, dig that deep beneath the surface, man, because you know they're two. Devin Haney was a matchroom fighter. Lomachenko was a fucking a top rank fighter. Match rank top room. Match, match room and top rank don't too much do business. They don't like Eddie Hearn on this side of the pond over here, man. So any opportunity to get to freeze them out, they'll do so. So it, it's going to be too much of a struggle to sit here and try to get a fight between us going on when we're on two rival um, 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 platforms. So there you go. Take the belt. Take the belt. It is what it is, and just give me the franchise or whatever, man. And everybody's kind of been running with that. And, you know, on one hand, you can argue it and be like, man, well, he did that. Because technically he did do that, but when you add context to it, it gives a lot, it, 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 it gives a better, you know, it gives more clarity to the situation. So um, he hinted on that. He hinted on a lot of other things. And um, a lot of shit that he said, I not a lot, but some of the shit he said I did agree with. The one thing that I emphatically disagreed with, though, is Devin Haney ducking Lomachenko. I, I I just can't see that happening for the life of me, man. Um, I can't see it, even though Dev, it, it, Devin Haney has already came out and said I'm not. I felt great at 135 pounds. I didn't feel drained in there. And you saw he looked better in that fight. He was a lot more explosive in that fight. He planted his feet. It opened up a lot more. He, and because he was able to plant his feet and not try to maintain that distance between him and George Cambosos, he was able he was able to you know bludgeon him in a lot big you know in a lot more dramatic fashion. So uh, why would I why did I even I don't even know why I even spoke on that I lost my point that fast. <laughs> But, uh, uh, um, oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. He looked up, you know, people were saying he looked drained, but, you know, he was saying, you know, off of the performance that we saw, he didn't look drained, you know what I'm saying? And he even said, I didn't feel drained at all. So it was a damn good victory for him. And, you know, he gave George, he gave Devin Haney credit for beating George Cambosos. He gave him credit for beating George Cambosos. You don't control who the, you know, who becomes a champion or whatever. The fighters, you, you know, Promoters and everything and matchmakers, they can play a role in who they, you know, in who becomes a champion or whatever. But at the end of the day, the two fighters got to get in the ring and run that shit. So it was a lot, you know, 
he broke that down and I, it's another thing that he did that I also definitely agreed with because once again it's easier it's easy to say like I was arguing with some fake ass lawyer nigga who be on these pop on these on these forums that we're on he actually got roasted by Nuke as well Christian something I don't even know that I don't know how to pronounce his name I think he's Puerto Rican or some shit like that but um he said something <coughs> along the lines that Devin Haney it, he's gonna beat Lomachenko because let me see what did he say Devin Haney would beat Lomachenko because Lomachenko lost to Teofimo Lopez and Teofimo Lopez lost to George Cambosos. Surface level, he has a point. Lomachenko did lose to Teofimo Lopez. Teofimo Lopez did lose to George Cambosos. But if you're not willing to contextualize the situation, then it's kind of pointless to sit here and go back and forth with you because it's just like you're, at this point, you're just trying to prove a narrative to stay stuck. In a mind frame that's comfortable and conducive to your feelings. That wasn't the best version of Teofimo Lopez. It just wasn't. And y'all know I'm I can't stand Teofimo Lopez. That wasn't Teof that wasn't the best version of Teofimo Lopez. And anybody who tells you it was is being very dishonest and they're not keeping it real. That wasn't the best version of Teofimo Lopez. But George Cambosos was good enough and solid enough to capitalize on his vulnerabilities. Because the next individual wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to do that. The next individual definitely would not have been able to do that. But he was able to do that. He was able to do that. So, once again, it's contextualizing the situation, man. Let's fully unpack this thing so we can... It's easy to just say, oh, well, so-and-so and so-and-so. So that's the reason why. As, as opposed to saying, no, let's give, let's, let's, let's give a timeline. Let's connect the dots. Let's follow the breadcrumbs and get to the bigger picture at hand. Before we, you know, before we get into this shit, so he did give him clarity on that, and he's like, that's what I was saying. He um, he gave a a, a, a breakdown of uh, Jorge Linares and Luke Campbell. He was like, the Luke Campbell and the Jorge Linares that Lomachenko fought were better versions of the ver. They were better version. They would beat George Cambosos. They would beat George Cambosos, and uh, Luke, uh, Luke Campbell has never been a world champion. But I don't disagree with that at all. I, I, I definitely agree. They would both beat jo uh, uh, George Cambosos. They definitely would. They definitely would. And he said, Ryan Garcia has a better win than him over, you know, with Luke Campbell. You dig? Like, I could agree with that to a certain degree. Luke Campbell has never been... A world champion but if you were to match them two up in the ring who are you putting your money on because the Jorge Linares that fought Lomachenko I'm betting 10 times out of 10 that he beats George Cambosos I am same as Luke Campbell so I, I like how he was breaking it down from that standpoint. My biggest beef with it was him talking about he's going to duck Lomachenko. He's been calling Lomachenko out for years, man. Um, I don't think there's a bigger fight for him at 140 pounds than, than Lomachenko. And you're right there to make this shit happen. So why would I jump up and have to wait in line to get a Devin, not a Devin Haney fight, but a Teo Famo fight when all Lomachenko has to do is beat Jermaine Ortiz in the next couple of weeks. And there's our undisputed title. There's my, there's my second uh, title defense, undisputed title defense with Lomachenko. And there you have it. Now he was also, I think he was trying to downplay his, um, his feelings towards what Devin Haney has said as far as I'll never let a white boy beat me. That's bullshit. All that shit is cat. Because what you said in counter, in counter to that, it, it, it showed as you should. You should feel offended by that. I'm not saying that you was, you know, man, um, no, you should feel offended by that. You should feel offended that somebody is saying, I'll never let no white dude beat me. I, I, if if Tom Brady was to say, I'd never let a black quarterback, you know, out quarterback me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I think every black quarterback should feel some type of way about that. Every black person who takes pride in their race should feel some type of way about that. I never played football a day in my life, but I feel you got me fucked up. Wait till Lamar Jackson get in his bag. Patrick Mahomes is already a, a, a champion. You dig what I'm saying? So we, you should feel some type of way about that shit. 
So I'm not saying that he's wrong if he did. People people try to ignore emotion. People try to ignore the fact I ain't in my feelings. I ain't mad. I ain't tripping. They try to ignore that shit to put them, you know, to show themselves in a different light that what you what you saying ain't got no type of effect on me. I'm an emotional dude. After a while, you know, I'm pretty good at holding my composure, but after a while, I'm in my feelings. That's just the nature of man. That's the that's 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 human nature. That's human nature. People say dumb shit, you get in your feelings. You supposed to. Who the fuck you think you especially when it's something disrespectful, let alone stupid. So when Devin Haney came out talking that bullshit, oh man, I'll never let a white boy beat me. He should have been in his feelings about that. Especially as a former champion. Yes, you should be mad about that. And you have your well within your rights to be mad about that. I don't I didn't trip off of that. You're supposed to feel some type of way about that. But he's downplaying it as if he didn't, like he wasn't like, yeah, he's young. That's what young people do. I don't give a fuck. I, I don't give a fuck about how young you are. You say some dumb shit, I'm in my feelings about it, and it is what it is. But he's trying to downplay his level of emotion involved in Devin Haney saying that shit. He's definitely feeling some type of way about that shit still to this day. The, oh man, the European ain't no more black chain. You know, when you jump out your you know, you jump out the window and say some shit, man, like, yo, but the black, the day of the black, you know, the day of the great black boxers is over, or some whatever shit you said, you, you that, that was a lie. That was an emotional response. So he's definitely still in his feelings about what Devin Haney said as it pertains to white boys being able to beat him. That was cat. You were mad, as you should have been. But as far as him saying that he's gonna duck Lomachenko, I definitely disagree with that. I, I definitely disagree with that. I do think the um, the clips that he put up. They were trying to be unbiased as they can possibly be. I do think he was trying to, uh, you know, bring some, some, um, uh, some sort of fairness into the equation to not let his emotion get in the way. And, you know, um, man, yo, you, so it doesn't come off as if he's hating. Because honestly, as it pertains to Lomachenko and Devin Haney, he didn't say too much that I disagreed with as far as a matchup between the two of them. But I definitely don't think Devin Haney is about to duck no Lomachenko. Because it would be pointless for him to jump up to cut now you gotta who do they have on match room? Well, nah, he's uh um, he's, he's he's still with uh he's still with top rank. Ooh, they got all the hitters at Hunt Foley though. Ooh, they got all the hitters at Hunt Foley. They do, they do. But they're not big money fights. Unless it's with Teofimo Lopez. They're not big money fights. And I personally don't think Devin should be in a hurry to move up in the now. I don't think Devin Haney should be able to move up. Should be in a hurry to go ahead and jump up to the next division now. I don't think he should do that. I definitely don't think he should do that. I think he should pilot this. Hit. Get in the ring with a bona fide killer at 135 before you move up. That would include Nakatani. That would include Komei. We ain't even got to talk about, let alone Lomachenko. Get in with some wolves at 135 pounds before you move up and really sharpen your tools, really tighten your defense. Because George Cambosos was able to cut you. I didn't hear nothing about a clash of heads of him. Oh, man, rest in peace, that cat. But I didn't hear about a clash of heads of him getting that, you know, causing that slice above your eye. I think that was from a punch. I could be wrong, but I didn't hear, I didn't hear about it. I don't think it was a I don't think it was a clash of heads while you got cut like that. So I definitely think you should stay at 135 pounds, get you a few title defense. You know, of course, defend your title with Lomachenko, but even if you lose a Lomachenko, stay at 135 pounds, at least for two or three more fights, man. And really get you, you know, polish your shit that much more. So when you jump up to 135, all right, yeah, I'm not 35 but 40. I'm void of power, but I'm, you know, I'm a lot more defensively responsible. You know, I'm um, I'm sharper in my fucking um, in my combination punching, so I don't just need to rely off of the jab. I can at least throw the two off of the jab and keep you at bay. I will work on shit like that because Devin Haney is an incredible boxer. He's always he's already as polished as can be. When I say polished, I just mean putting yourself in a position where you're taking more risk and not being punished for the risk. So you could throw, you know, you could throw a one, you could throw a two off of the one, you could throw a three off of the two, and not be at, you know, yeah, of course you're always at risk in boxing, but 
you could be in and be out before that dude is even set to throw a punch. Like how you did with Jorge Linares. How he was able to get in, get the shot off, and get back out before he was even set to react and throw the shot. That, I, I thought that was incredible how you was able to do that. But when you start jumping up and waiting, when you're standing in front of Regis Progray and Zapata and all of the, ooh, man, Zapata, Chone, like it, a, a jab is, I don't, I don't see a jab keeping Chone honest, dog. And when you jump up there, you ain't the bigger man now. Josh Taylor is up there. Jose Ramirez is up there. You and uh, Progray are eye to eye. You and Chone are eye to eye. So I would I would suggest that even if you was to lose to a Lomachenko, you stay at 135 pounds and just polish your shit just a little bit more. In that regard, I don't want because I don't want to say like, I ain't calling you Edgar Berlinga or nothing like that, but just polish your shit a little bit more. You dig on the, just on that notion because you're already as polished as can be. But just you know when I say polish, just take being a you know being able to take risk without being at risk you know that's what I mean that's what I mean y'all got my drift I explained it enough but I definitely don't think Devin Haney is about to duck Lomachenko I don't see it happening he's too close to a money fight and him and Lomachenko is definitely a money fight so I'm not about to jump up there and fight and go and chase a Teofimo Lopez I, I'm, I'm just I'm not about to do that shit when I got my money fight right here I got my money fight right here, and it's the dude that I've been wanting to fight. It's the dude that I've been calling out. It's the dude that I said I'll never let a white boy beat me. He's right there. If he gets past, if he gets past Ortiz in the next week or so, that's a fight that's ready to be made come early next year. So I don't I I, I, don't, I don't see him jumping up. That would make no sense for him to do that, man. So that's how I'm feeling about it, man. I'm about to go in here and change and go get my son, man. I will uh get with y'all later. Douches.